Welcome everyone. This is Tracy and Wagner with Versatile Inspirations. And today we are going to be diving deep into one of the four Claire's, Clairvoyance. Let me share the screen and we'll get started. So let's get started visiting the Claire's. This time we're going to visit clairvoyance. So clairvoyance is, the meaning is clear seeing. So we see, and a lot of people will see sometimes in their third eye, sometimes in their mind's eye, sometimes it will be clear as day to the person that's having the visions. So you see with your third eye or have premonitions. So in that third eye area, that's pretty much where the clairvoyance originates. That's where we can um, gather the information that's out there. So the third eye actually kind of translates that for us or it gives us those visions or those premonitions. You see through a person, a lot of times people with that clairvoyant um, ability, which we all have, but if yours is a little bit more, um, I don't know, a bit more available or you're able to use it a little bit easier, we can all, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit, we all can kind of clear the blocks. A lot of times that clairvoyant ability may have certain blocks attached to it, or you may be frightened or fearful of what you may see. So those are called, those are causing blocks to your ability to be able to see things. Now, when we see through a person, um, what we're really seeing is into their true self. We're seeing their true character, their real intentions, or if they're hiding things. A lot of times um, that clairvoyant ability will show us signs. It'll show us premonitions. It'll show us um, their thoughts or ideas. If um, we have any issues with something um, that they may have said or done the other person then a lot of times we will see you'll be able to see the truth with that clairvoyant now we're not interrupting what their energy we're not taking on that person's energy we're not um we're not taking over that person's energy what we're really doing is we're just seeing their true character. We're seeing what they truly are. One of the cases I've seen um, is a lot of times people that are a little shy. They don't speak much, but what happens is when you're clairvoyant, you can actually see that person's true character. You can see what their true intentions are, what their true purpose is. And so you're able to maybe, if you have a friend or a client or somebody that you just know that is a little bit more reserved or a little shy, by using our clairvoyance, we can actually maybe help that person come out of their shell and maybe be able to interact a little bit easier with the world and um, be able to actually do what they're supposed to do here in the world instead of being so reserved that maybe they're fearful of going and um, doing those things. So it can be a benefit. Clairvoyance has the ability to find things very um, hopeful. They're missing people, objects, and situations. Um, a lot of people with clairvoyance or the psychic ability are help um, like law enforcement solve crimes, they're able to find missing people, missing animals, missing situations. Maybe not all the pieces are fitting into the puzzle. And so a clairvoyant can actually maybe go in or a psychic can go in and actually help to kind of piece the puzzle back together for them. As you can see, there's many different ways um, that the clear seeing can help. The main way is with the third eye. And if you're not 
real, you probably already heard the third eye or the brow chakra, the Ajna, that is in the middle of the forehead, right between the brows. It's in that area, the forehead to right between the brow area. Um, that is actually represented a lot of times with the Buddha statues. You'll see that third eye there. Um, with psychics, a lot of times people will have that um, all-seeing eye. You'll see that even on the dollar bill on the back in that triangle. You'll see that all-seeing eye. Now, when clairvoyance work, we can, clairvoyance can happen in many different ways. Like I said, with either seeing within the mind's eye, not really outwardly seeing, but pictures in the head, just maybe like if you're daydreaming or something, it kind of has that same kind of um, look to it. Like if you're just daydreaming and you just see it in your head, that is how a lot of people see it. But some people actually see apparitions. People can actually see energy. People can see um, deceased relatives. People can see um, lots of different things. So that is more of an outward, almost like it's right in front of you type of thing. So there's a lot of that as well. And sometimes when we've um, developed our clairvoyant ability to, and gotten rid of the blocks and open our eye fully, we can actually see things that have a tendency to look like you're watching it on a film, like it's right in front of you. So it's very interesting how it works. Now, even though I say that, it doesn't matter how you get your clairvoyant images, it just does. All of them have the same permanence. They all have the same, um, what would I say? The same uh, measure of importance. They all are important and they all have the, um, they're all relevant. So it doesn't matter if we see it in our mind's eye or see it as a movie in front of us it all works the same. It's all relevant. And you want to take that into consideration. Now there is a difference and you'll feel that difference between when you're daydreaming and when it's a premonition or something that comes to you. A lot of times that's how clear points works is it just kind of comes to you. It kind of just out of the blue, it'll come to you whether you hear a song, whether you hear people talking, or you're just sitting kind of meditating. A lot of times those premonitions or those thoughts will just come to you. So we'll move on. So tools that you can use to actually work with your clairvoyant abilities. There again is your third eye, clearing it, opening it, allowing the images to come to you. That's one way of using a tool. Cards, whether they are tarot cards or oracle cards, that actually helps to give you a tool. Some people really like tools and they really like the ability to manipulate those tools into um, pictures on their own. Some people really like really flashy or very picturesque. Um, cards that will actually have, um, can hold a meaning to them. They'll see a color on the card. Something will stand out and that will represent the message that you're supposed to be giving or it clarifies or validates a message that you're supposed to be giving to someone. <clears throat> um, some cards don't have hardly anything. Some people use a regular card decks that the numbered ones um, that you would be using in a casino or something. Some people use those and they get representations from those cards and that's all they need. Or they have just a very slight picture, something that's just maybe even drawn on, just, just a quick representation, kind of like a one or an eye or um, anything or word even, and they'll get representation from that or validation on a message through those. 
pendulums. Pendulums are awesome because you can actually use your energy to answer questions yes and no, or if you have a map that um, has the letters on it, and you can actually spell out words, you can get all sorts of information, especially for yourself if you're using the pendulum. If you are curious about a particular food or a particular mineral or vitamin, you can line those up and you can actually see which ones are beneficial for you in particular. So if you are thinking you might be allergic to gluten or bread or bananas or nuts, you can lay those out and actually use your pendulum to see which products you might be sensitive to. There again, same thing with um, certain, not medications, but vitamins, like different vitamins. If you sit them out like a B vitamin and an A vitamin and zinc and things like that, if you line those up, you can see which ones maybe your body is needing to um, be at its utmost best self. So you can actually line those up and use your pendulum and ask for yes and no, ask for it to um, be guided to one or the other. It, they're fun and they're pretty accurate. I love my pendulum, so I use it quite a bit. Palms. People can actually see things by looking at your palm. So you, some people that are trained in palmistry or that um, do hand reading, they can look at the shape of your hand, the length of your fingers, your um, swirls and whirls on your fingertips. They can look at the lines on your hand and it tells a story. And that story comes to them through a clairvoyant or a, or pictures into making the story of you. Crystal balls. Crystal balls and mirrors, um, things like that are for scrying. And so with the crystal ball, what we're doing is we're gazing and with the mirrors, we're gazing and we are allowing the message to come to us. It's almost like meditation, but there again, it's a tool we can set in front of us, just like a flame on a candle um, that we get drawn to, our eyes get drawn to, and we just kind of gaze and let our real vision kind of go and kind of um, just be a little more vague on what we're seeing. But by doing that, we're able to see images, we're able to get clearer on the messages we need to deliver and for more validation. Other ways are by runes. Runes we can throw runes and then through how they are arranged and which ones are up and which ones are down, we can get information from the runes. They've been around for a very long time and um, they're not as readily available, but if you look online, you can find some really nice ones. Also, they're your dreams. Clairvoyance comes through with your dreams as well. And by learning a little bit about dream, dream interpretations, you're able to learn a little bit more about maybe what your dreams are trying to tell you. A lot of times we're, we're so um, busy with our chaotic chaotic lives. We've got monkey mind. We're looking at our to-dos and fretting about what we haven't done and not even meditation will get us to calm that sometimes. But when we are quiet and we go into sleep, those dreams are able to come to us and give us the messages that we're maybe not hearing throughout the day. We're not giving our bodies the time to hear those messages. Also, just like I said, the tools for, of meditation, if you can sit and you can meditate, more times than not, you're going to get some premonitions, you're going to get some ideas coming to you, and those things, some people call a lot of that monkey mind, but sometimes they are messages that you're needing to hear, and they're your clairvoyant intentions happening right now. Now, sometimes we don't necessarily want 
all of that and we can actually close our third eye a little bit so that we can actually kind of gain the benefits of not getting any messages and just kind of letting ourselves be neutral, letting ourselves be able to relax and get the information from that meditation. So next, removing blocks. Now, some people actually have blocks. And if you think you're not able to clearly see or you don't feel like clairvoyance is one of your abilities, you've probably got some blocks attached to it. Now, it may not be from this lifetime. It may be from past lifetimes, and which is causing almost like a little block that is keeping you from seeing. Now, just like walls or these kind of um, the walls that are around cities and stuff, what they're doing is it's trying to protect you. Um, you may have, um, in your subconscious, you may find that through one of your past lives, because you may have been very clairvoyant in a past life, that maybe there's a block to that. Or maybe during this lifetime, you may have seen something and said something and people ridiculed you or called you a liar or said that you're just making things up and your subconscious put a block there so that you wouldn't get hurt anymore. But what we can do is we can open that third eye. So what we want to do is, um, what you can do is just see your third eye in the middle of your forehead. If you close your eyes and take a couple of deep breaths and just focus on that area, what we, what you can see is a third eye in that area. Some people see it away from them, looking at them. Some people just see it resting there. Some people even see it more in their head rather than on the outside of their bodies in between. So it doesn't matter how you see your third eye, just know it's there. And by seeing it, sometimes you'll see a block there. You, sometimes you may even see just a whole wall around it. Sometimes you may see mesh in front of it. Sometimes you may just see an eyelid that's closed and over that so that you don't see. Sometimes it might be blinking, opening and closing, opening and closing, or maybe sometimes halfway down the eyelid. So um, what we can do is we can just visualize that third eye. And just like when we open our eyes, you can just open up that third eye. Sometimes it's not as easy as that. <laughs> Sometimes you need a little bit of help. And um, if you get just a small, um, what this is, is it's crystal quartz and it's just clear. So that clear crystal quartz and put it right over the third eye area and then envision a light coming, white, bright light coming from the divine source coming into that um, crystal and going into your third eye, clearing all the blocks and just hold it there until you see that your third eye is open, that it's radiating this beautiful light from it. And then it's, you've done it, it's open. Now, also what we can do is we can actually apply pressure to that area and maybe even pressure to right and back of the head. You can do that with your fingers or you can do it with your crystal and put by putting that above that area and just putting, applying a little bit of pressure to the back of your head and just seeing that um, light come right through there and right out the back. And what that is doing is it's clearing out that third eye, that brow chakra. And so then you're able to clearly see. Now you may see that area as a bluish color, blue light coming from it, um, maybe blue light with some flecks of white or some flecks of purple. And that's just fine. That's that third eye color coming through, or if you see it as clear white, that's okay too. It's just, it's open and it's ready to receive messages. Now we can do a quick prayer or a quick blessing just 
to, it's almost like just an affirmation, just letting your subconscious know, letting the divine know, and letting your third eye know that it's okay to see. It's okay to clearly see. You are wanting it to be open. You're wanting to receive those messages. And just by acknowledging the fact that you can clearly see, you're going to be able to open that third eye as well. If you're going to be going into a reading or somewhere where you're wanting to use your clairvoyant abilities, being proactive, cocooning yourself with a bubble of white light just so for protection, and then by seeing that third eye open and just saying, I clearly see or I see clearly, or whatever kind of affirmation that you want to say that will bring about that feeling of being able to open it up and being able to see clearly what you're needing to see is great affirmation that you can see, and it will be a lot easier. Now, in some cases, we want to close that third eye. We want it to kind of not necessarily go to sleep, because if you're needing to get some clarity or if you're needing to get a message that maybe you haven't received and this is the time, it's going to still come through. But sometimes we don't want to receive all that messages, all those um, thoughts or ideas or those images coming to you a lot. Because at some point, <laughs> you may be bombarded with information. Once the divine spirit knows that you are wanting to use your clairvoyant abilities, you're going to start getting images and messages very, um, very quick. Remember their time isn't like our time. <laughs> our time happens very slowly. Whereas over there, time happens fast, but it's infinite. So they're just trying to get information to you. And so sometimes we want to close that down a little bit. Now, we can just envision our third eye closing either halfway or all the way shut. And especially if we're doing meditation, we kind of want to go and just help ourselves relax. Now, you could be going into meditation to receive messages, and, we, and in that case, you don't want to close your third eye. But just by closing it down, you're able to rest your whole body and your mind. And so just envision that third eye and there being an eyelid over your third eye and it just slowly closing and then it just resting and that's how you do it that way you can rest a little bit more comfortable all right perfect let's get out of the share Perfect. All righty. Well, I hope that helped you with your clairvoyance. Now, remember, you have you are clairvoyant, and even just by acknowledging that fact and using that as an affirmation, you are clairvoyant. I am clairvoyant. I have clairvoyance. I can clearly see. You are acknowledging that fact, and those messages are going to start coming. Remember, it's your third eye that you're going to be seeing that, whether it's visually as a movie outside of your body, right in front of you happening, or if you're seeing it within your mind's eye, if just like a, um, like a daydream or a dream, something that happens within, it doesn't matter. You are clairvoyant, and you can have the clairvoyance of whatever you choose. So feel free to let me know what you've done with your clairvoyant abilities. I'd love to hear. Send me an email at Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y at versatileinspirations.com or visit me on the web. All of them are right down below. You can just stop by and say hi. Take care and until next time, as always, I'm offering you and yours loved light and eternal blessings. Take care.